the life of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu, he was demoted, he couldn't go into the battlefield. This was the biggest test for Khalid bin Walid. After Hira, for six months, he was stopped from going into the battlefield. And Khalid dubbed that year, the year of the women. The year of the women, because he couldn't go and fight. And for the last four years of his life, he couldn't go and fight. And the narration mentioned, but Khalid didn't waste his time. He would recite the Quran, man like Khalid bin Walid. After Fajr, he would recite the Quran until Dhuhr. He would say that jihad has stopped me from learning the Quran. Now he made up for it. From Fajr until Dhuhr, he would recite the Quran and he would cry out to the fear of Allah. Continuously cry out to the fear of Allah. And after four years, but when Khalid was close to his death, subhanallah, can you imagine a man who fought numerous battles, brought down the superpowers, is dying upon his bed. And the Sahabi came to him and he said, Oh Khalid, and he said, you know when Omar demoted me, I felt bad in my heart. But now I realized that what Omar done was right. Because Umar only wanted the khayl for the believers. And I have nothing in my heart for Umar ibn Khattab anhu. And he was close to his death. And the narration mentioned when people would walk in, he would show him his arms. That there was not a hand span on his arm which did not have a wound upon it. And he would show him the right arm. He would show him the left arm. He would show him the chest. He would show him the legs. And he said, look at me. I fought over a hundred duels, numerous battles, and I'm dying on my bed. Khalid is dying on his bed. Somebody said to Khalid, they said, Oh Khalid, don't you understand? The day the Prophet dubbed you the sword of Allah, it was impossible for you to die on the battlefield. For if you died on the battlefield, that would have meant that the sword of Allah was broken by an infidel. And the sword of Allah could never be broken. And Khalid radiallahu anhu, contrary to his desires, died upon his bed. But see, on the battle of Mauta, Khalid radiallahu anhu broke nine swords. Why? Because they were the swords of Khalid. As for Khalid himself, he was Allah's sword. So he could never be broken. And the man who brought the two superpowers of the day to their knees, passed away upon his bed. But the truth is, that why shouldn't he desire martyrdom? For didn't the Prophet wasallam say about a martyr, that he is not given ghusl, because his blood will bear witness for his shahada on the day of judgment. His clothes are not changed, because his clothes will bear witness for him on the day of judgment. A janazah according to many fuqaha is not prayed upon, the shaheed. Why? Because Allah says in the Quran, لا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أموات. Those who have passed away in the path of Allah, don't say they are dead. بل أحياء. They are alive by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The truth is that Khalid's clothes may not bear testimony to his shahada. His blood may not bear testimony to his shahada. But I swear by Allah, every single shaheed of this ummah will bear testimony for Khalid bin Walid. Because there has never been a shaheed in this ummah who has not been inspired by Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu. Never been a shaheed in this ummah who has not been inspired by Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu. And the narration mentioned that he left behind a horse and he left behind a sword and he sent it to Umar ibn Khattab. And when Umar saw it, he began to cry. And he said, Abu Bakr judged men. Abu Bakr knew men far better than I did. He realized the virtue of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu But can you imagine that horse that Khalid left behind? Could any other man ride the horse that Khalid rode? No, because he would never be able to fulfill its right. Can any other man hold the sword that Khalid held? No, because no other man would be able to fulfill his right. Because Khalid was on a different level. And the narration mentioned that when Khalid passed away, the women of Bani Makhzum came out and cried. And Omar had a strict rule that women could not come out and cry. 
even when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu passed away and the women gathered in the house of Aisha radiallahu anhu and they were crying and Umar, Umar dispersed them. So when it came to Khalid bin Wali, the man came to Umar and they said, oh, Umar, the women of Bani Makhzum are crying over Khalid bin Wali. And Umar radiallahu anhu said, may your mother lose you. For the likes of Khalid, those who cry should cry. For the likes of Khalid, those who cry should cry. And then Umar radiallahu heard the mother of Khalid reciting the poetry. He said, Anta khayrun min alfi alfin. Ida kubbat wujuh rijali. said, you are better than a million. When men fall on their faces in front of you. That you are more braver than a lion and a tiger and Sahar ibn Abi Ishbali. That you are more generous than that flood that comes from down from the mountain. And Umar heard the reciting this. And he said, the mother of Khalid bin Walid has spoken the truth. I swear by Allah, if Khalid was better than a million at that time, he is better than a billion of today. But the truth is that there will never be another Khalid bin Walid. By Allah, if you look at Khalid, he was, he was Frederick the Great, Genghis Khan, Napoleon, Taymor, all of them in one. He was more, all of them and more in one. And they will never be another Khalid bin Wali. As Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, and he bore testimony to Khalid bin Wali. He said, Ajizat nisa an yalibna misla Khalid. Women will never give birth to the likes of Khalid bin Walid again. May Allah elevate the status of Khalid bin Walid on our behalf. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us with the likes of Khalid bin Walid and the other Sahaba radiallahu anhum on the day of judgment.